Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky with Blue Cat Studio. Today we're going to work on a super fun, um, it's actually a gnome, a Halloween gnome holding a pumpkin. It's a little hard to see, um, but we'll begin with kind of like our ultra, ultraviolet purple mixed with a lot of white to stain our wood. You do not have to do this on wood. You could totally do it on a canvas. No big deal. But I'm just trying to add a little, little bit of color to a little bit of color to my wood so it's a little bit more interesting than it would be if it was just straight and plain. Got a little extra color going on there. So I'm very much watering this down and hoping that the wood will begin to absorb some of that color. Again, you could do this on canvas and you could just be coloring it with whatever. So I'm using the neon ultraviolet purple. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorites coming out a little bit pinker than I'd like on this particular background so I may come through a little later and make this a bit more purpley but at least for now oh Ro Rosemary says cute bandana thank you I might actually be having a bad hair day today so I was like all right let me just put this thing on and get my hair out of my way so I don't have to mess with it so our quick lunchtime break here so just doing a quick background and I'm doing the background now because most of the rest of the paints um, is going to be done um, in thicker layers and will cover up any, any whoopses we make or overlaps. So if you get slightly over your lines, it's a-okay. So we're going to have fun. It's kind of a half wizard hat, half candy corn. That's kind of my kind of my inspiration. And by the way, I do not like candy corn at all. I think it's well, I'm not going to give you my full opinion there and words for it, but I won't eat it. But it is certainly cute and it's definitely indicative of the season. All right. So now we've got a good, just kind of pinky purpley base. Give her um, brush a quick rinse. Whoops. Oh, I forgot my paper towel. Okay. So now that we've got that base coat done, I'm going to wipe up some of this purple just because it's taking up my whole, my whole thing. Okay, so we will now get some, um, let's do his hat really quick. I'm gonna work with a large round brush. And let's see, the base of the candy corn is yellow and then it goes orange and then it goes white. <laughs> That's not always like the most rememberable thing for me. I don't know why anybody else like get confused about these things. So grabbing, let's see, we'll go with a daffodil yellow. Yeah, it is yellow at the base, right? Sometimes we get it all confused. All right, let's get this guy yellowed in. So just kind of adding some base yellow here. Got his cute little nose. And the details will come later. Just getting the base color. Yeah, that's nice. And this is one of those ones where you can make it as opaque as you like or as see-through as you like. That's a little bit too too cute a yellow, isn't it? Let's grab some cadmium to tone that. I think these yellow candy corns tend to be a little bit thicker, a little bit, a little bit more of an orange tone to them. So adding some cadmium to that just for fun. I'm good, moving quickly here. This was just a really quick freehand sketch. I sort of flopped on the wood a couple minutes before going live. Um, and for those of you who are wondering, you know, I do usually plan out my projects, even if it's just a little thumbnail sketch in a notebook. So that's something that you can do too. All right, good. We've got our basic yellow in. If you've got something to offload on, please use it now. Let's find me an open page here and my, my wiper off her finger. I don't need to rinse my brush because I'm going to be sticking with same tones. And we're going to grab some Jack O Lantern Orange, one of our faves for, for this time of year. It's got just the right level of warmth to it and we'll make his little candy corn hat. All right, so get that orange in there. Also a little bit more see-through than I'd like. So you wanna create kind of a smooth line between the two colors. I got a little lumpy blumpy there. And then I'm gonna kinda of just pop that out, give it a good, good base coat. Now the beauty of painting on wood, and you don't have to paint on wood, but it is kind of fun, is that it's gonna it's gonna actually help you in the drying process, and it's gonna soak up a lot of the um, 
a lot of the moisture from your from your paint. Oops, got a little yellow in there. So if I can just angle that, you can see that we now have the orange stripe for the um, for the candy corn. And of course, offload, offload, offload. Now here's that moment where a quick rinse might actually be a good idea because we're going to move on to some white. And of course, do I have my white paint sitting around? Oh yes, yes I do. So you can use the DecoArt Americana for the white or the Liquitex Basics or whatever you happen to have on hand. Uh, you just want to make sure it's a titanium white so you get really good coverage. Where did I put my, there's my brush. Okay. Now, because this is a quick lunchtime thing. Oh, a Facebook user, because you didn't click the link yet. It says, I love your fall paintings. Um, thank you so much. After this live is over, I'll go check it out and actually catch your name. So with this white, we got to be just a tiny bit careful right along the edge of that orange so we don't pick up too much of it. And a little lump, and we're going to kind of allow that tip of that hat to sort of fold it over. Because we all know gnomes, not gnomes, yeah, it is a gnome. He's a gnome. Gnomes aren't the tidiest of, of creatures. They're always a little bit... A little bit cute, a little bit careless, a little bit, a little bit frumpy. So there we go. We got a good, good, just kind of bright white going on in there. And we can come in and add some shading and other, other details later, but just so that the glare is a little less, there you go. Let me see if we can adjust this. So it's less glary. Bueller, Bueller, where's my glare coming from? Whatever. We must keep going. So we'll take some of that white and we'll get his, we'll get his beard done too. Might as well, right? So I'm gonna just base coat it in first, getting around his nose. And the beauty of this is we're really just getting the, the we're getting it started. And that mean, that way, if we need to pause along the way or come back to it, we've at least got, you know, the key pieces put in. Um, and then the details are the ones that we can kind of play with. Ooh, I got some serious paint bogey there. Let's see, bring the beard down to here. And I'm thinking of it in terms of like fun curls and swirls. Curls and swirls. I do love the gnomes. I haven't done, I haven't done gnomes since Valentine's. We had some really cute Valentine's gnomes, but we did so many gnomes last year. I think I must've just needed like a a quick gnome break, but it is definitely gnome season again. Anybody else out there like gnomes a lot? I think they're so stinking cute and funny. I don't know, they crack me up. Since we're here and we're going, I'm gonna grab a little bit of Bahama Blue to tone his beard. So just a little, just a little squeeze on the palette there. Grabbing a little bit, little bit, little bit, kind of then mix some white and the blue. Oh, hi, Jeannie. You said, oh, you forgot the StreamYard thing. Oh, yeah, it's it's funny. I don't know if you have to click the StreamYard thing every time or if it's a one-time thing, um, but I'm so glad you could join us. All right, so we're going to take the blue kind of from, from the edges, and we're going to start to add some of those blue curls. Let me see. Can we? Come on, focus, focus. It's not helping me. It is there. I wonder if to mess with a bright again. You guys, I tell you, it's one thing to make art. It's a whole nother thing to figure out how to film it so everybody can see what you're doing. So I'm coming in and just doing some good swirls. Swirls and curls. What's up, kitty? You're making a lot of noise. She's like, meow. You can probably hear her, huh? All right, getting those swirls. And while this looks like blue right now, the brain is not going to see it as blue later. You're just going to see it as, as, um, well, I don't know, as beard, right? Oh, hi, Rhonda. She claps. Thank you. Thank you. And again, if you guys want to get the tracer for this, I will make it available. Um, inner circle folks, it's, I will just automatically upload it. Everybody else. Um, oh, that's my membership. So for those of you who are like, what is this inner circle thing? It's my members. Jeannie's one of my members, so she will automatically get access to all this stuff. Um, but yeah, I will get a link up where you guys can can come get it. Okay, so we've got a base coat on the, the beard. 
We've got some texture, offload, 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 because that's what we do. Give it a quick rinse. And let's see, since we're here, let's do, we got to do the brim of his hat. I think I'm actually going to go with black on that one. So a little lamp black ebony from Decorate Americana. A little bit of black goes a really long way. A little bit of black goes a really long way. I'm just going to say that a few times. Okay. So coming out from next to, do you see how I'm kind of slightly above, whoops, twirl that guy here slightly above and around the uh, the yellow part, because that's how you kind of get the perspective in. I think we, yeah. What, did somebody get locked in something? No. She doesn't usually go weird like this. Anyway. All right, so just getting that brim one over here. So if you're thinking about, you know, getting your favorite brushes and getting stuff to do a project, um, some of the, the key pieces that I would highly recommend um, for brushes would be, you know, a large flat brush, a small flat brush, a large round brush, a small round brush, and then, you know, basically some kind of a liner brush. Um, those are generally the ones that most of us uh, in the industry kind of default to. Everything else can be kind of a, a fancy extra. All right, I'm going to add just a little bit of black above the nose. Yeah, all right, we'll figure out. We'll figure that out. Maybe we'll just do this and not have a brim, not have a, a little band. I think a band on this would be extra. So here we go. We'll just keep that really, really simple. And his nose is going to be a little bit sort of skin tone, so we do want some separation between the yellow and the skin tone because they're going to be very, very close in value, which has to do with how dark or light it is. Okie dokie. So I'm going to go ahead and offload and rinse that guy. But now we have the basic pieces of the hat in place. I'm going to let some of the black dry before I do his nose and we'll do his outfit. So my thoughts on his outfit were that we would go an electric neon green because, because we can. So we'll squeeze that guy out right here. But before I do that, actually, I'm going to give it a base coat because I'm pretty sure that's going to be very see-through. So festive green first, which is still a really happy bright green, but it's kind of Christmassy. So we're going to just kind of come down and I'm going to do a little line here to remind myself that he's got his hand in his pocket. And we'll sort that out in a minute. Yeah. And then we're giving him bare toes. So that's going to be cute. And I think gnomes only have four toes, not five toes. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Anybody? Anybody? How many toes do gnomes have? Or do we get to make that up? Are they humanoid or are they like actually human? That is what I want to know. So he's got his kind of little frumpy, blumpy little robe there and his four toes. If you guys think I really need to add a fifth toe, I will. But I would love your opinion. How many toes do gnomes have? Four or five? All right, come around here. It's much easier to go around the white with a darker color than it is to kind of take the white around the dark color, simply because that white won't be picking up the extra. All right, here we go around Mr. Pumpkin here. I don't like this green. Again, it's a base coat. It's gonna allow it's going to make it so that our neon green doesn't have to work quite so hard to do its job because these neons tend to be a little bit see-through or transparent. So I'm always thinking about that. Like, what is my paint doing? How is it acting? How do I want it to act? What do I need to do to get it to where I, where I want it to be and what I want it to do? All right. So let's break out... Um, Let's break out. He looks like a wizard, doesn't he? Offload that green paint. I'm gonna break out the hair dryer really quick just to get this where it, you know, nice and dry. Ugh. Okay, here we go.
There we go. Sorry, I had the thing on, on cool air. And I was like, man, that's not, not doing what it's supposed to. So now we'll come back in with our with our neon green, our slime green, our Halloween slime color. And so, of course, when we turn a black light on this guy, it will glow like crazy. All right, we'll get that kind of covered. And again, this will take a few coats, but this green would show up way more kind of yellowy, funky if I didn't have the green undercoat. I love fluorescence. I cannot help myself. I don't know about you guys. Maybe I'm just a child of the 80s and 90s. Could be. But they're so much fun to use in art. All right. So we've got a fairly uneven kind of funky, funky doodle looking coat here. Again, so much of painting is about, you know, working with your layers of paint, giving them a second to dry, coming back. When we apply wet paint on wet paint, half the time, we really just end up kind of picking up the base layer and not depositing the second layer that, we're, that we were hoping to. I don't like the way that thing is going. I'm going to just curve it around and see what happens. So a little funky. We're good. And I'm going to offload again. Now we have most of the base colors in. Give it a quick rinse. We'll work on the pumpkin a smidge so that that's drier for when we get to the next part. So Again, jack-o'-lantern orange. To get that orange in, I gotta be real careful again, like right here around the edge. And you can do any kind you kind of face you want. Like this is his little candy bin. Did you guys all carry those little orange plastic pumpkins as well? You know, it's funny, like these days when I've been trying to shop and buy a couple of these for projects, like the round, you know, the ones with the black handle and they're shaped like pumpkins. Like now they have these sort of bucket shaped things instead of the that have a pumpkin face painted on them, but they're not like pumpkin shaped anymore. And the pumpkin shaped ones, I feel like they're really hard to find. Like it's like not the thing anymore, but there's so many like cool crafts you can do. I mean, I don't know. I saw this one where like they literally um, like use cement in like a flower pot with this whole post and just kind of angle them and turn it into a planner. I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. I want to do that too. All right, since I'm here and I got the orange, I'm going to do just a second coat. Yeah, just to kind of fill that in. Again, we've got a little bit of glare going on. Whoops, but good. We have a nice base coat of orange. And apparently I smushed some yellow into it, but no big deal. Offload, offload, offload. And quick rinse. Let's do the nose and the toes. So breaking out a little bit of, whoops, a little bit of red. We'll use true red. Any old red will do really. It kind of doesn't matter. Just pick something that you like. And I think we just need a teeny tiny dot. So I'll grab some orange over here, some red to kind of make a, a warm tone. And then well, we'll just mess up this white. I'll grab a chunk of it and we'll mix paint boogers. Ah, come on, paint boogie. Okay. And then we'll mix kind of a peachy tone. So that was kind of an orange and a red mixed together. If you would like your, your skin tone to be a little bit cooler, you can always add a little touch of a very tiny kiss of blue to kind of take it down a notch. You can add more white. If you want to make it a little bit uh, browner, um, you know, you could consider adding a touch of a touch of green to it. Again, that's going to kind of neutralize it. So we're thinking about opposite colors and we'll just get a nice solid pinky nose in here. Pinky nose and then we'll have pinky toes. And I think I'm going to have to purple up this background a bit because it is a lot pinker than I'd hoped for. So it's funny because this purple, when placed directly on white canvas, turns into this like insanely vibrant color right here. But look what it does when you water it down on wood. It's so different. So sometimes it's, it's kind of difficult to um, predict how stuff is going to act. All right, so I'm going to run a little low on my color. I'll just kind of get his toes going. Mixy, mixy, mix. All right, so his toes are going to look a little dirtier on his face, I guess. I don't know. All right. So we'll get him some, some toes, some little toes there. 
You just kind of blop them in with your brush. Four toes, right guys? Right guys, four toes? That's what we're doing? Gnomes have four toes. We're making that up on the spot because five toes is just too many toes. It looks funny, but four is cute. Artists rule the world. They, they, they create the laws of nature. Is that, the, is that the case? I don't know. All right, here we go. And all right, there we go. So four toes, super cute. Hard to see for sure. So I have, these are almost the same value. And now on Tuesday, I went live and did this whole talk about value, a value study. So if this was a value study, I'd be failing miserably, right? Because it's, if you squint at it, you can't even see it. Shoot, you, you really can barely see it. Um, and so we're going to have to find ways to differentiate that to make it work. So I'm going to come in here and just kind of add some kind of a hand there or a fist that's holding his, holding his pumpkin. And again, I'm going to have to go like purple. I may break out the, um, the purple pizzazz to get this background better. Cause I don't, I don't like how that's going. It's too pink. It looked different on my sketch in my sketchbook. <laughs> As is often the case. But that's the beauty again of acrylics is, you know, so if you don't get it right the first time, you can come back and you can make tweaks. So now that we've kind of got the base pieces put in, I'm going to hmm, come down and start using a smaller. This one is a liner brush. It's just a fine line brush. You don't have to have one that's quite this fine if you don't want to, uh, but it's certainly an option. So we will begin by adding some stuff out of the way. We'll get an outline on the hat, so we'll turn it sideways. So there's less risk of dragging my hand through everything. So we'll kind of come and here's where we can add a little bit more character to that. I need a stray bristles. Come on, bristles. Everybody get in line, work with me here. Okay. So if you've got stray bristles, I do. Sometimes you can kind of roll your brush um, in the paint to kind of get everything and on your palette to kind of get it all back together. And because it's such a tiny, a tiny line, you generally do have to go back into your, your paint quite a bit. So now I've kind of got a rumple here, so I'm going to add some creases to kind of keep it, keep it lively and interesting. And we'll come and we'll separate these two colors. Whoops. Come on, black. Do your thing. Do my thing. Yeah, that's really what we're saying. Do my thing, not your thing. And maybe a couple of rumples here, tidying up this little spot there that got funky. And here's where, you know, if you've got a couple of rough edges, things that are overlapping or you missed a spot, um, you can really use the, uh, yep, come on. You can use your black line to kind of pull it together. So the hat is already making a whole lot more sense. Come on, brush. Sheesh. So adding a little line there. Give it a little bit of wrinkle rumple. On the underside. And everybody's talkative today in terms of my cats. Well, it is a blue cat studio, right? So, all right, we'll get a couple of, couple of lines in here, a couple of bendy boos in here. That orange almost looks like a carrot, doesn't it? And now he's got a cute, kind of lumpy, fumpy, funky, Hat. And then we'll go around his nose real quickly with a black just to kind of create a nice clean line. And we'll tidy up up here. Whoops. Oh, no, I didn't. I did. Then we'll come around to get his beard, adding some of the details in. So kind of follow that line. 
and we're going to kind of mirror some of the lines that are already there in blue and the blue will start to become more of like the background thing and then we'll kind of go here and we're just getting those details in now you could totally also do this with a, um, a paint pen if your paint is dry my paint is not dry so i really can't <laughs> i can't do that part yet Whoopsie daisies. And if your brush isn't cooperating, well, you know, do the best you can with what you got. And the beard is probably the one place where perfect lines and all that stuff is really way less important. So a couple of motion lines. I feel like this guy is like, Kind of in like the hurry mode like hey it's 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 gonna be christmas time soon isn't it can we just move straight to christmas no sir you gotta go trick-or-treating first we do not skip october not in my world all right and then we'll add some fun swirls a couple of wiggle waggles here whoops i got a little thick but that's okay it works like that And then maybe a little something that comes down here. So now we'll add a couple of just quick, quick motion lines and things to keep that beard looking beardy. All right, I think we've got a decent beard there. Now we'll come around and get a quick outline on his outfit. So I figure we've kind of got a pocket right here that he's maybe kind of Plopped his, plopped his oh, hand in. If that makes, if you don't like that, you can always add a little wrist or even just a cute hand. And get a nice outline on him. Maybe a couple of kind of rumples in his sleeve. And here we'll kind of extend that out. Corner. All right, here we go around the edge here now I think if I were if I had a lot more time I would do more on his on his outfit probably a second or third coat um, I'm trying to keep this fairly fairly short you know like you know well under an hour and just kind of simple all right so we'll, we'll do his toes first Just quick rounds for the toes. Little circles that are graduating bigger and bigger. And then of course we got the big toe. And gown, bloop. What is gown? What is it? What is this thing he wears? A robe? Quite possibly. Yep. Okay, good. That's still on camera. Sometimes I move stuff around and I slide right off camera and I'm like, do 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 in my own world. Whoopsie daisies. I forgot. Trying. Okay. So now here, I feel like I'm in the zone where I might be getting myself in trouble. Oh, here, let's add some rumples to his sleeves. Maybe a little extra cuff, a little cuffage there. So let's see if he's holding it like so, then we're going to kind of see mostly a fist. Or maybe he's holding it like this. Is he holding it this way? Yeah, okay. We'll give him kind of a some fingers this way. Four fingers and the thumb is maybe hiding. So I guess they have like normal hands. We're making it up, right? We're having fun with this. There we go. We've got his outline and kind of his gown there maybe. And we will get Mr. Pumpkin shaped out here. And again, because this is, we're really going kind of whimsical and cutesy with this, we're going to be a lot heavier on the outlines than we might be on, say, a piece of, of fine art or stuff that's a little bit more fine art oriented. So on the top there, I just did kind of like an, like a very flat oval to help um, make that look like it's 
hollow and like hold something. All right, let's get his face on here really quick. Boop. And if you're really interested in doing a lot more detail, you totally can. Just wanted to kind of share this concept with you so you could have fun doing it as well. Little tiny nose, boop. And of course we can kind of black those in. And you can do a perfect job blacking it in or keep it simple and mostly okay. Really gonna be up to you. And then whatever mouth works for you. Let's see, I kind of just go with like a, a ziggy zaggy. But you could also do like the, the missing teeth pumpkin guy, whatever. I always like my pumpkins to look a little bit kind of friendly with a touch of fierce. Although I think we're more on the friendly side versus the fierce side today, but that's okay. All right, give this a, uh, let's see, what do we need? Do we need black somewhere else? Just quick, quick look. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little uninformed over here. So we'll add a little, little cuff right here. You know what we also need is probably a cuff that hangs down, down here. So we'll have to do some filling in of green right around his things there. And then I think we want like a little, a little bit of extra rumple around his feet. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and offload that black, give my, my thing a quick rinse and we'll come back and grab some white. I may need to squeeze more white on my, on my palette. How about you? I think my palette looks a little, my white's a little, a little, little down there. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Isn't this fun? I love this kind of stuff. All right. So we'll grab our white with our fine liner. We may need to give it a little twist. We want a cute highlight on his nose. So his nose looks kind of shiny. Some of these finishing touches really matter. So a couple of little highlights or maybe even toenails. Boop. Little touches there. And then we can kind of have some highlights on his, on his jacket or his gown or whatever the thing, whatever this is that he's, he's got. Well, highlight there around the feet. And if you wanted, you could add more highlights to his, his beard. I might leave that for now, just cause again, I'm, I actually have to get back to class in five minutes. And then we'll do a little highlight around the rim here. A couple of highlights on his fingers. Maybe if we don't like it. We don't have to do it, but little lines here, here, a little something to kind of make this a little more pumpkin-y. A little kind of interior lines. Just give that pumpkin that some uh, dimension because we love dimension. Here, 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 here. A little bit. Do it kind of on the insides there. Yeah, I picked up a bit of black in that whole process. So I just kind of wiped, offloaded some of the paint. Little highlights on the handle. All right, let's get his hat. We need some highlights around the rim. Oh, it's time to rotate, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is time to rotate. Ah, oh, Teresa says so cute. Thank you, Teresa. This is a fun one. Everybody loves a good gnome, right? All right, now on this side, we're going to add some additional highlights here. Can I? Got to zip back to class in a second. So he's kind of got the whole candy corn thing going on. And you can be kind of loose here or not loose. Oh, you can't even see that. I'm sorry, but we've added the highlight there. So if this is the shadow part, this is the highlight zone along here. And so if I really wanted to make that candy corn, you know, more believable, I could even take a little bit of the, the white and the blue. Kind of like we did for the beard and then kind of get some of the blue going in this zone here kind of in the underside 
That way we have more of a highlight. That is very hard to see. Well, no. White balance is not cooperating. Okay, well, so there you go. That's kind of a really basic, fun, goofy, goofy gnome whose outfit's kind of Frankenstein color. Again, for my personal preference, I, I think that this sort of more pizzazz purple, yes, yes, yes. I know I have to get back to class. This more pizzazz purple color might be better. In fact, yes, it is way better. So you could come in and tweak it like so. And I think you could even add some lettering that says trick or treat or some, or happy Halloween or kind of whatever, whatever works for you. Now my hope was for this to be a little bit see-through so you could see the wood grain. But right now I think my main focus is just kind of getting that it not pink. But yeah, what do you guys think? That purple is way better than the pink, right? That's definitely where, where we want to be taking this. Um, so that might be kind of boring to watch, but you can literally just go through and, you know, get the colors where you want them. All right, I gotta go because I need to get back to class, go learn a little bit about finance. But if you have questions, let me know. If you want uh, the tracer for this, let me know. Ooh, hey, let's add a little, little shadow on the underside of his toes, just with a, a kiss of purple, not too much. Now his toes really look all, all round and stuff. I will see you, go oh, and under his nose too. Uh-huh, yep, there it is. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. I love you all. And again, if you're interested in the tracer, just write tracer in the text and I will make sure to uh, find a way to get it to you. Bye. Okay, Teresa, I see you and I will come back in a couple hours and make sure you can get it. Bye guys. Wait, I was gonna like touch screen on my screen. That's not touch screen.